So uh, I had to, I admit, I had to read through Acts 22 three to four times uh, this week before I really was able to hear uh, the Lord speaking to me afresh. And it's something when you get familiar with a narrative passage in the Bible, uh, can become a real challenge. I'll just turn this on. It can become a real challenge for us to be able to get fresh bread. But the Holy Spirit who wrote the scriptures, he's always ready to breathe on something. And uh, so I, I was aware as I was reading through this this coming week, I was aware in verse 10 that um, Saul, who's just uh, sharing the story with the Jewish people in Jerusalem, they've tried to tear him apart. They've tried the mobs, tried to riot and uh, literally murder him. And a Roman commander has stepped into the situation. And then, you know, most people would just say, get me out of here. But Saul sees it as an opportunity, as a platform to preach. And he says, can I say something? And um, and then he begins to share with the Jews in Jerusalem the story of his conversion on the Damascus Road, which is found in Acts chapter 9. And uh, what really took me as I was reading through this this week was uh, the questions that he immediately began to ask. Acts 22.10. So I said, what shall I do, Lord? This is after he's been confronted by a blinding white light and a voice coming out of heaven. And the Lord said to me, arise, go into Damascus, and there you'll be told all the things which are appointed for you to do. So I want to ask you a question today. And the question is simple. Have you stopped asking God questions? What do you mean, James? Well, this is something I've discovered and Viv alluded to it in the prophetic word today. When God is on the move in your life, he's expecting you to ask questions because it's a relationship. And he's all knowing we're not. We're finite. He's infinite. And which means that there should always be a question on our lips. Because the older we get, the more we realize we don't know. And if you remember uh, certain teachers at school, maybe that you were have, had the privilege of teaching you as you were growing up, there were certain teachers in my experience that I really leaned into. And one of the reasons was is that they fostered an environment of learning where they just said, if you don't know anything, please ask a question. And they encouraged questions to be asked. And you were confident as a student that they had answers that you needed to know. So what did you do? You asked the questions. So what happens when we stop asking God questions? Could it be that we're no longer searching for answers like we used to? Could it be that we're no longer chasing things down in our life? We've gotten comfortable. And so we're not bothering to ask questions anymore because we're sitting in that seat of comfort. Could it be that we no longer care about things or people as much as we used to, so we're not bothering asking the questions? You know, most of you have heard the story that I had where I you know, shared a word of knowledge with a girl who had had an abortion and she hadn't told anybody, not even her parents. And I remember when the Lord unveiled that word of knowledge to me, and it was like I was going to rush out the door and tell this girl what I knew about her life. And, uh, and the Lord said, don't talk to her yet. And so my next response to the Lord was, was what do you want me to do then? Because I wanted to do, I wanted to be very careful. You know, at this stage, this is all just information I've heard in the prayer closet. And so God is guiding me. And so the Lord said to me immediately, as soon as I asked that question, it was just like a conversation we could have between two people. And the Lord said to me, I'll let you know when I want you to talk to her. And of course, I had to wait nearly a month before I could actually talk to her where God called, caused everybody to uh, leave for lunch. And there was only herself and myself present. And I had that opportunity. But, you know, um, when we're new in Christ, we often have many questions because everything is so new and we realize that we know so little. And so if we've now got to the stage in our lives where we've stopped asking questions, I guess we've got to really ask ourselves, why is that? Have we lost the desire to pursue God? Have we lost the desire to find out more about what he knows? And, and, and we've lost the, the humility to actually realize that we don't know a lot in comparison to what God knows. 
And there's a principle in scripture that is really powerful. And it goes like it goes like this. Let me just bring it up. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings to search out a matter. So according to the scriptures, part of our role and development is to become a question asker. God conceals certain things so that we might chase him down and search out those things that he's concealed. And he's saying that that's the glory of a king to be able to search out a matter and find out what we don't know. And so, you know, when you don't know the answer to something and you want to know, you begin to hunt down the uh, answers. So if I go back to, to this, asking God questions demonstrates a number of things in your life. First of all, it shows that you're hungry. You're hungry for answers. You haven't allowed cynicism or sarcasm to build up like plaque builds up on our teeth. We're often, you know, the longer we are in the Lord, I've watched this pattern in people's lives. You know, they get disappointed, they get hurt, they get upset, they get angry, and they stop asking God questions. They stop getting hungry for God because that cynicism and sarcasm has built up like plaque and they can't actually, or they won't, uh, humble themselves before God and come before him and get the answers that they need. Secondly, asking God questions acknowledges your humility. You don't know everything. I don't know everything. And there's lots of stuff we need to know. And the all-knowing one has the answers. Amen. Thirdly, you want to know what God thinks about things. You actually want to know his opinion because it's his opinion at the end of the day that matters in your life. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free is what Jesus taught us. Fourthly, when you ask God questions, you're not assuming you know what needs to be made known. You want the right guidance in your life. You want his guidance. And that leads to the final. Uh, and there's many more. These are just five things I thought of. You're not willing to head down the wrong path. So you want to make sure that you're asking God the right questions in order to get the right guidance to make sure that the paths of the just are brighter than the noonday sun. And that means that, you know, that your life is not shrinking, but it's growing brighter because you're heading down the right path for God. And so if we look at that verse again, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. And so if we look back at the story of Saul in Acts 22, as he's retelling the story of how he found Jesus, this bright, blinding white light on the road to Damascus and this voice that speaks to him. And so the, the, the principle of questions actually happens is, is when we have a fresh encounter with God, we don't allow ourselves to get stale. And, and, and this is why Jesus intercepted Saul on the road. He knew that he had a good heart, but Saul had stopped asking questions. And whenever we stop asking questions in our Christian life, I can guarantee one thing, you'll end up going down the religious track. You'll end up getting into rituals and routines without any life because you're not bothering to ask God the questions. And so if we look at Saul, who became Paul in this situation, he was hunting down Christians. He actually believed he was serving God by killing and murdering people of the way, Christians. Because he'd stopped, he was an educated man, we know that. We know that he was educated by Gamaliel, we know that he was a Pharisee of the Pharisee, he was very versed in the Old Testament, but here we see that he's actually gone down a complete wrong path because he stopped asking questions. Am I doing the right thing doing this? This doesn't feel right, hunting down people because they don't believe the, the same way that all the Sanhedrin believed back in Jerusalem. And he was locking them up. He had he had a temple guard that was with him that would go and arrest all these Christians. And so he thought in his own mind that he was actually doing the right thing. He'd stopped asking the questions until he had a fresh encounter with God on the Damascus Road. And I suggest to you that this is the answer 
that we all need within our lives when we get stale, when we get stiff and starchy, when we've stopped seeking God out, we've stopped asking questions because of cynicism or whatever it may be, disappointment, anger. And we need to say, Lord, I'm, uh, I, you need to break me out of this phase in my walk with you and give me a fresh encounter. I need to see you afresh, Jesus. And this is what will happen when you have a fresh encounter with God. It leads to two questions. First one, and, and this is the first one that, that Saul asks, who are you, Lord? And if we look at Acts 22, you can see this. Uh, I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So I answered, who are you, Lord? There's the first question. Who are you, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. And so suddenly Saul is confronted with the reality that he, he that Jesus, whom these people have been preaching, is actually real, that he's risen from the dead. And suddenly everything in his world is turned upside down as he's beginning to discover the identity of Jesus Christ. And the Lord reveals himself to that question, who are you, Lord? And of course, when we have that operating within our lives, at least to the second question, what do you want me to do? Which is the next question that Saul asks. So first one, God, I thought I knew who you were. I thought I was doing your business, but I realize I'm not because I actually didn't really know who you were. So he's had a revelation of Jesus. And the first thing that happens when you have a revelation of Jesus, this happened in my life, no doubt this happened in your life. Suddenly you have a desire to carry out God's purposes in the earth, to do his will. And so you say, what do you want me to do, Lord? What shall I do, Lord. And so we see that Saul is now positioning himself through these two questions to be used powerfully by the Lord. And we, we know that we know that in, uh, when we discover a deeper identity of who God is in our lives, it will always lead to greater works than these shall you do in my name. Amen. The deeper the revelation, the greater works we shall do in the, in the name of the Lord, where the answer to that second question, what do you want me to do, Lord? What shall I do? And we see it all through scripture. We see, for example, Joseph. Uh, Joseph, the young boy, has dreams and revelations from God. God's setting him up for these revelations of who he is and what his role is in life. And it unfolds and eventually leads to him through a series of really difficult and challenging circumstances. God raises him up from prisoner to prime minister in one day to become the prime minister of Egypt. Moses is walking in the desert looking after the sheep. He sees a burning bush. He has a fresh encounter. This is holy ground. And suddenly he realizes who God is and that God is capable of delivering the children of Israel out of Pharaoh's reign and rule. And so Moses answers that question, what do you want me to do, Lord? And he becomes the deliverer of God's people and takes them out of Egypt into the promised land. And similarly in this story that we're looking at today, Saul, Christian murderer, killer, um, religious, heavily religious man, encounters Jesus on the road to Damascus, and it leads him to become the greatest apostle ever to the Gentile people. And we see this pattern, Jesus actually reveals this pattern to the apostle Peter. He asked them a question, his disciples, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, listen to this. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. So he's saying, Peter, you're, this, is, this hasn't come to you by natural knowledge. This has come by fresh encounter, revelation, the Father has revealed my true identity to you. And because of that revelation, he goes on to say in the next verse, and I say to you, Peter, on this rock, I will build my church, the rock of revelation, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And so what a wonderful thing as we begin to understand 
and we get that revelation of Jesus, that fresh encounter with Jesus. We, we keep asking the questions. We see all the way through the Psalms. That's why we love the Psalms so much, because the Psalms reveal the fact that the songwriters, the psalmists, have actually had a revelation from God. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Revelation. He leads me into green pastures. Revelation. He leads me beside still waters. Rest for my soul. Revelation. And so as we receive the revelation, we, be, we begin to get stirred up and we want to know God more. We want to understand more of his purposes and plans for our lives. So we keep asking questions. And I was really blessed as a young Christian to have a mentor that taught me. And he said, James, whenever you've got unanswered questions, never be afraid to talk to the Lord. Write them down. Put them in your prayer journal and ask God these questions and watch what will happen. Because he's the living God, because he's in relationship with you. He will begin to answer the questions that you're asking him. And that's what a living relationship is all about. And so have you stopped looking to discover more answers to this first question, who are you, Lord? Have you become comfortable in your knowledge of God? Have you become set in your ways? Are you continuing to want a deeper revelation and fresh encounter of Jesus? Or by the fact that you realize this morning as you look in the mirror that you've actually gone off the boil, you've stopped asking questions, and your relationship is very stagnant uh, with the Father. God wants you to stir that up today, and he wants you to begin to get um, prepare your heart for a fresh encounter with him. And so those questions will begin to flow through your life, and you begin to position yourself to answer that to see God answer that second question, Lord, what do you want me to do? Because when you answer that, what happens is, is that you're prepared to do anything. You're prepared to shift. You're prepared to sell up. You're prepared to leave your job. You're prepared to do anything when you understand that God is answering that question in your life. What do you want me to do, Lord? Mm -hmm.